in the problem helium gas volume is v1 pressure p1 and temperature t1 it is separated from another helium gas whose volume is v2 here pressure is p2 and temperature is t2 by highly insulated wall of mass m so this is the highly insulated wall of mass m in an insulated cylinder this is insulated cylinder the partition wall is released and it moves without friction find the maximum speed acquired by the partition wall so here you can see all the system is thermally insulated these two chambers are also thermally insulated so there is no heat exchanged individually the process in this chamber and in this chamber is adiabatic process so in both the chambers process is adiabatic adiabatic in both let us assume one of the pressure is higher let us assume p1 is greater than p2 if p1 is greater than p2 this is higher and this is lower then in that case force from this side will be higher from the force on this side so piston will move towards the right if p1 is greater than p2 then piston moves towards right and if piston is moving towards right then volume here is decreasing and if volume decreases then pressure here is increasing here pressure is decreasing a time will come when the pressure on both the sides will be equal till that time this piston will accelerate in this direction and its speed will increase so speed is maximum when the pressure on both the sides are equal speed is maximum when pressure at both the sides become equal let us draw the diagram when pressure becomes equal suppose piston is somewhere here i have assumed p1 and p2 and p1 i have assumed is greater than p2 now volume will become v1 dash and let us assume this is v2 dash pressure here is p1 dash and this pressure is p2 dash and p1 dash is equal to p2 dash is a common pressure on both the sides and assuming this pressure to be p now to solve we have to find the maximum speed or maximum kinetic energy of this partition wall and if we apply the laws of dynamics then force is applied by this gas on this piston and force is also applied force applied from here is pressure of this side into a pressure of this side into a so we can say that kinetic energy acquired by the piston is equal to the net work done by the gases on both the sides so kinetic energy of the piston is equal to work done by gas total obviously this side of gas is doing positive work and this side of gas is doing negative work and this is the net work done by the gas on both the sides and individually process in both the sides are adiabatic process so for each side from first law thermodynamics from first law of thermodynamics the heat exchanged delta q is equal to delta u plus work done and heat exchanged is equal to zero so work done is equal to minus delta u work done by gas number 1 is equal to minus delta u1 work done by gas number 2 it is minus delta u2 and this total work done w1 plus w2 is equal to kinetic energy which is half mv square so this total work done is equal to half mv square now how to calculate delta u for delta u we can write 
delta u is n c v delta t and c v is r upon gamma minus 1 and this n r delta t we can write it as p final v final minus p initial v initial this whole divided by gamma minus 1 now total work done by the gas w can be written as w1 plus w2 work done by individual gases and it is equal to minus delta u1 minus delta u2 for adiabatic process q is equal to 0 delta u1 we can calculate from this expression this is delta u for minus delta u it will be p initial v initial minus p final v final so i am writing directly the value of minus delta u minus delta for left chamber so p1 v1 minus p1 dash v1 dash divided by gamma minus 1 and for this second chamber p2 v2 minus p2 dash v2 dash divided by gamma minus 1 i am taking these two terms together so this will be p1 v1 plus p2 v2 divided by gamma minus 1 and these two terms together minus will be common p1 dash v1 dash plus p2 dash v2 dash divided by gamma minus 1 as p1 dash and p2 dash are equal and they are equal to p from this we can write p1 v1 plus p2 v2 divided by gamma minus 1 and this p is common it will be now v1 dash plus v2 dash divided by gamma minus 1 and v1 dash plus v2 dash is final total volume initial total volume is v1 plus v2 and volume is definitely not changing so for v1 dash plus v2 dash i can write v1 plus v2 directly v1 dash plus v2 dash must be equal to v1 plus v2 so now this is equal to p1 v1 plus p2 v2 divided by gamma minus 1 minus p and this is v1 plus v2 divided by gamma minus 1 the only thing which is unknown is the final common pressure and to find the final common pressure i am using the equation of adiabatic process that means p v k power gamma is equal to constant i am writing this equation this equation for left chamber we can write p1 v1 power gamma and this is equal to p1 dash v1 dash power gamma and from here we can find v1 dash this will be p1 divided by and this p1 is simply p it will power 1 by gamma v1 similarly v2 dash final will be p2 by p power 1 by gamma and this is volume v2 i can use the equation v1 dash plus v2 dash is equal to v1 plus v2 and from here we can write p1 by p power 1 by gamma v1 p2 by p power 1 by gamma v2 this is equal to v1 plus v2 and p raised to power 1 by gamma we can take on the other side it will be k power 1 by gamma finally the answer for final pressure can be calculated from this p1 1 by gamma v1 plus p2 1 by gamma v2 divided by the total volume v1 plus v2 and to find p we move this power here and it is power gamma <coughs> from here we can find the final common pressure and by putting this final common pressure we can find the total work done and this total work done is equal to half mv square from this we can calculate the final velocity to find the gamma for gamma we can write 1 plus 2 by f where f is degree of freedom for helium the degree of freedom is 3 monotopic gas it will be gamma is 5 by 3 so we can put gamma as 5 by 3 for helium gas so this is the final solution